Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we discuss one year of Russia-Ukraine war, which will come on the 24th of February. The situation today looks rather bleak, as there is really no chance of any kind of ceasefire or negotiations in the air. More than that, there have been several events in the last few days which give the indication that both sides are hardening their positions. The most important of these was a visit to Kiev by President Joe Biden for a day. It was a secret visit, unannounced, he flew to Poland, traveled by road and train to Kiev, spent several hours there and returned. This was a very significant visit because it is said that this is the first time that a serving US president goes to a war territory which is not under the control of the American forces. It is true that Kiev is still under the control of the Ukraine government, but the United States Army itself is not present there. And to such a situation for a president of the United States to go is an exceptional event. The mes message was very clear. What he wanted to tell the world, tell the Russians and the, tell the Ukrainians where the United States stood. And also giving an indication that there is no let up. The United States is not going to relent on this question of supporting Ukraine, as he called, as long as it takes. This is a very major signal at a time when the war is about to enter its second year. There are many expectations that towards the end of the year, there could be some kind of uh, relaxation of tensions and could even lead to some kind of negotiations. This was particularly because of the G20 declaration in Bali, it seemed to indicate that generally there was a consensus in the world that this is not a time for war. And uh, both the United States and Russia acknowledged the contribution of countries like India in shaping uh, the uh, end of the war and uh, beginning a, a, a time of uh, peace. But President Biden's visit, his statements there, and the reactions to the statement from President Putin all indicate that we are heading for a more difficult time in the war. Because there is no uh, statement of any kind of compromise or any kind of anxiety about the continuation of the war on both sides. So we are in a situation where the United States has declared that it will uh, continue to support Ukraine as long as it is required, and uh, also add more substance to their support. The uh, United States has already committed more than $27 billion uh, to Ukraine. And uh, this time it was not only that uh, he declared that it would be the, uh, the, tw the $27 billion will not be a limit because he announced a large number of new supports, supporting activities for um, Ukraine. So additional military package of about US dollars, 500 million was pledged. Not only, not only that, uh, new supplies of unspecified rocket launchers and other uh, 31 tanks and so many others which are uh, have not have been held back so far. So there is a, a new uh, support to Ukrainian conflict, physically providing new materials and uh, support to um, the Ukraine, the Ukraine's war effort. So uh, the U.S. is giving the clear impression that this conflict will continue. And uh, he would also involve, the so United States would also involve more NATO countries in this. 
And that is why he went back to Poland and again spoke about the situation. As far as the reaction is concerned, Vladimir Putin, of course, uh, straight away reacted very strongly what the, what the United States had done, accused the West of starting this war, and also pledging that uh, he will do good to any extent to secure support for Russia and secure the um, and, and defeat Ukraine at any extent. So this, these two things that the, what the president has said and what President Biden has said and President Putin has said um, should be of great concern to the world as a whole. In addition to all this, Vladimir Putin announced suspending participation in the new START treaty, which was signed in 2010 by President Barack Obama and President uh, Medvedev. Uh, these star talks, as you know, are limitation of arms talks. They are not disarmament talks in the sense of every nuclear power engaged in it. But this was started some years ago as a kind of limiting the expenditure of the countries to the barest minimum. So as part of the Dethan uh, between uh, the East and the West, several discussions were held by which they decided certain limitations on the arms race. And this does not uh, affect other countries as such. This is only between the two of them. They decide as to as much as, as, as they decide as to what kind of lethal weapons they must have, whether they should unnecessarily expand. And they try to meet the threats as perceived by the two countries. So the strategic arms limitation basically control the expenditure of these two countries rather than limit the possibility of war, because they will still retain you know, the capacity to uh, destroy each other. So the suspension of the new START treaty is significant from the Russian side, but it may not have an immediate implication, except that this comes in the wake of Putin uh, talking about the use of nuclear weapons. So they'll have enough nuclear weapons even if the arms treaty continues. But uh, this is more symbolic that the cooperation between the United States and Russia on the question of arms limitation will now be, will now be stopped. Uh, and the US has also supplied 31 battle tanks, larger range missiles, and, um, and Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is still not satisfied. He is asking for more and more um, uh, weapons because he, he thinks that the war is reaching at critical time. And if he has more weapons, he may be able to uh, beat the Russian. And um, the president also said that Putin was dead wrong in starting the Ukraine war and um, support Ukraine uh, as much as it takes. So, and uh, he told the uh, president of Ukraine that uh, we continue to believe uh, that uh, Ukraine is going to prevail in the end. So the, basically what the president Biden did by his visit was to re-emphasize and, and uh, stress the unwavering commitment to Ukrainians uh, to democracy, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. And in the statements by President Biden, you can also see that he is projecting this as a conflict between democracy and autocracy. So he said that it is now in Ukraine that the fate of the world, which is based on rules on humanity, is being decided. So they are seeing this, he is seeing it as a wider context. And they would naturally want to involve other countries in the conflict. And this is the first is United States is openly supporting Ukraine, and it is strengthening the US uh, NATO defense and continue to give physical support to the Ukraine war, which was happening before, but it is acknowledged and it has been extended. Uh, so the, uh, the situation has become more complicated because of 
President Biden's visit and the reaction of the uh, Russians, particularly in the context of the arms limitation treaty. That may not have an impact, an immediate impact, but it connects with the possibility of his wanting to uh, use tactical nuclear weapons in the war if it becomes necessary. He has never ruled that out. So the linkage that he is making between the President Biden's visit and the aggravation of the conflict to the nuclear arms talks. So which means that he is still thinking seriously on the question of uh, um, of nuclear war being waged. That is the other dangerous trend that has emerged. Uh, one other development at this time is the role of China. Uh, China has, of course, been neutral in this war, in the voting system, almost like India. But uh, after the uh, treaty between US, China and Russia, just before the war, has certain implications, uh, which is that uh, in case Russia is in difficulty or you know, on the point of, uh, of defeat, uh, China will have to step in and will step in. But the Chinese statements at this time are much more, uh, shall we say, peaceful in the sense that uh, Chinese foreign minister said that Beijing is deeply worried about the spiraling of the, of the conflict. So China is trying to say that uh, it is not aggravating the conflict and, uh, and also said that China will provide its wisdom, as it were, uh, to promote dialogue and to um, bring about some kind of immediate stop to the, uh, to the war. But on the other hand, there is indication that China might, according to the Americans, China might, in fact, start su supplying arms to Russia, lethal weapons to Russia. There's a charge that uh, China denies, but uh, the United States has hinted at that. So, and among all this, there is also this report that Xi Jinping is likely to visit Moscow. And uh, that would be, of course, to seek peace, as he, as he says. But uh, on the whole, the Chinese intervention, if any, will have to be in support of Russia in the context of the American situation being, American position being hardened and expanded as a result of the Biden visit before the end of the, uh, the first year of the, of the war. So Russia has made it clear that it is fighting for the very uh, victory and will not back out because of the a new position that the uh, U.S. Has, has taken. And he has said that, of course, the West has been uh, plotting to attack Russia. And this has been denied by uh, President Biden. He said there was no intention to attack Russia in any way. This will uh, com completely uh, be within Ukraine, and the support will be to the Ukrainian soldiers, and there will be no um, direct attack on Russia. And uh, you may also remember that when uh, Biden traveled into Ukraine, a few hours before that, a warning was given to the Russians that the president was going to travel to make sure that there is no accident of any kind which may take place during the president's visit. But that did not mean that the fighting stopped. Even when president was visiting Ukraine, he was in Kiev, there were bombs falling around and uh, it was not a completely uh, peaceful situation. So, so one year since the war, uh, one can say with regret how much has happened. It has killed thousands, displaced uh, millions of people. It has disrupted the global food and energy markets. And therefore, the so-called war between democracy and autocracy that is developing, it might also bring into the war other countries uh, in, the, it's in the event of the, um, the war becoming decisive in one way or the other. At the moment, it's not at all decisive, unless the war takes a new turn, which now it has taken because of the American support. There was never any, any uh, decisive victory for anyone. 
both sides have had uh, successes, both sides have had uh, defeats. So unless the situation changes after the after the first year into a new situation, uh, things were slowly and gradually cooling down, you could say. But uh, at the moment, at the time of a, um, the, uh, or the, or the anniversary of the war, uh, we can see only that uh, this, is, uh, this is worsening. Uh, as far as um, the other countries, involvement of other countries is concerned, the reactions, you could see that uh, NATO countries are all of course, supportive of, the, of President Biden's initiative. Obviously, they were all consulted before he went and also declared, announced all these new support to, to Ukraine. So, as far as the uh, nuclear matters are concerned, uh, President Biden said that uh, it will watch, but at the same time, Americans are saying that uh, this is uh, an irresponsible act. So, arms limitation treaty is really something that uh, uh, causes concern, but the Americans are not directly reacting to it uh, because it has no immediate impact on the war situation itself. So, and another development is that uh, President Putin said that uh, he had heard that the Americans uh, would be breaking the uh, the the present uh, suspension of uh, nuclear testing. Both the countries have agreed not to test new nuclear weapons. And um, uh, Putin said that it is, we have these reports that America might resume testing of new nuclear weapons. And if that, that happens, he will also, Putin will also react. So there is really no sign of any kind of, kind of uh, uh, way out of the conflict, and all signs indicate uh, that uh, the uh, situation is worsening as the uh, the first year of the war is completed. Uh, China is not likely to intervene directly, but uh, we do not know when Xi Jinping is going. That says he will go in. Uh, uh, in the spring. So it is uh, quite possible that China's efforts will be to somehow control the spiraling effect of the of the war. And there could be some effort by China to bring about a ceasefire on negotiations. That is the only um, helpful sign, but at the same time, knowing where, where the Chinese sympathies lie, this cannot be taken for granted. So while China may not enter the conflict at any time, time soon, the Chinese intervention, if is there any in the future, uh, will be on the side of Russia. That is quite clear. That's also not very comforting for us to think. Well, as far as India is concerned, we have taken a consistent position that uh, this is not the time for war. It is time for uh, negotiations, reconciliation, etc. And that idea has been accepted by the G20 countries. And now, later this year, we have the G20 summit um, in India. And therefore, India will be particularly careful not to take any sides on this issue and try to bring about some kind of a, of a resolution to the conflict. Of course, it is not part of the formal agenda of G20. But considering what happened in Bali, where much attention was given to this, I suspect that since the war is not going to end in the first year, uh, it could be that the agenda of the uh, Delhi j and summit uh, might be clouded by, the, by this issue. And uh, some focus will be given to the resolution of it. And uh, if j and can give some guidance to both the parties to end the conflict, that will that'll certainly be a, a plus point for the Indian presidency. So India's own position remains the same. Uh, obviously, apparently, there is going to be a General Assembly resolution being floated by France. And uh, there have been reports that France is trying to influence India to vote for that resolution. 
in the sense that resolution may be neutral in a certain sense and therefore uh, countries like India could also, India and China could also support. Uh, but there is some discussion going on in New York and elsewhere. But on the whole, the situation is far from satisfactory. It is dangerous and if it con continues, it will not only affect Russia and Ukraine, but also the rest of the world. That is where the concern is because of uh, shortage of uh, you know, food, shortage of energy, shortage of fertilizers, and all these are staring the world at this particular time. So there is a need for this to be uh, resolved, a need to end the war, but the way it is going, it only looks that it is spiraling further at the end of the first year with no solution in sight, which is not a very uh, hopeful sign. So we should look out for new developments following what has happened in this last one week and see whether there is any possibility of any intervention by the G20 or anybody else, Security Council or the General Assembly to end the war. But the situation is far from hopeful. Thank you. Well, the only organization which has that capacity is the United Nations. But this war is being waged by a permanent member of the Security Council of the United Nations. So what can the United Nations do? So that is why I was saying that possibly G20 would emerge as a kind of uh, grouping which can impact on the situation. because it. Uh, includes the permanent members, it includes the other countries from the developed and developing world. So it is possible that it may have an impact. But, uh, but the way the situation is developing, we do not know what position these countries will take. But it is quite clear that the whole world is not divided into two. It is not that uh, every country is uh, supporting either Russia or the United States. But lots of countries in the middle who are concerned about what is happening in the uh, war, in the war conflict, and what it has, what implication it has for the world, and there are large, large number of countries. In fact, almost all of the countries are willing and keen to end the conflict, but there is nothing that they can do because two permanent members of the Security Council are involved. So, as organizationally, uh, there is no possibility of an impact. But the G20, I believe would be of some uh, impact on the situation when we have that conference. But that, of course, is several months away. But effort will be continuing by everyone. The only body, it's not a committee, the only principal organ of the United Nations which is entrusted with international peace and security is the Security Council. So no one else in the United Nations has the mandate or the ability to handle this. And the United Nations becomes completely paralyzed when two permanent members are facing each other because they can veto each other all the time. And therefore, as a body, as a body entrusted with peace and security, Security Council is completely ineffective. Thank you.